Once upon a time, Crash Bandicoot was a name we held in the same regard as Mario and Sonic. He was the PlayStation's biggest mascot, the one that was going to challenge the goody-goody plumber and that arrogant little hedgehog in the platformer wars. And for a while, he did exactly that. Naughty Dog, yes, the Uncharted folks for all of you guys out there who didn't know that, developed three classic sort of 3D platformers that became immediate favorites on a system that was just starting to get its legs in the hyper-competitive games industry. But while Mario and Sonic continue to get featured in great games, Crash fell to the side. He hasn't gotten his own brand new platformer since 2008. Well, that was until just this last year. Crash is back, baby, with a whole new look. Hey everyone, and welcome back to another brand new episode of The Completionist New Game Plus, a show in which I'm taking a second look at the games I've already completed right here on The Completionist due to me taking them down last year. There's 120 videos that I took down, and if you want more information on that, you can click a link in the description down below. Today's episode is very different because for the first time in our New Game Plus series, I'm going to be taking a look at a brand new version of a game that I've already reviewed here on the show. From this point forward, I'm going to be grabbing whatever is the most definitive version of that game for the re-review, whether it be just a Game of the Year edition with full-on DLC or an incredible full-blown HD remake. The idea is that, theoretically, you've seen my take on the classics, and you can sure as hell find them somewhere on the internet, but I want to have newer discussions. Ones that not only update the old format of the show, and sure, it's more work for me to do to replay these bad boys, but hey, I'm the completionist, and that's just what I have to do. So, does this HD remake hold a candle to its source material? Let's find out. Yes. The Crash Bandicoot fanbase has always been there, silently watching, observing, hoping for the return to form one day. Hell, Crash's introduction to the gaming space was one that no one saw coming, but yet he quickly left impressions in all of our minds, especially those commercials that had Crash throwing shade at Nintendo. But ever since Crash Team Racing, Crash Bandicoot had maybe a hit or two that did okay, but nothing was commercially successful as the original trilogy. Now, the character of Crash Bandicoot himself was owned by Universal and was licensed by Naughty Dog. However, Naughty Dog were the pups that put him on the map. Eventually, Activision got their hands on the IP, and since then, it's been a pretty bizarre time for Crash. Yet, fast forward to E3 2016, and we were just teased with the possibility that Crash is back. But ultimately, Crash wasn't just back, he was back in exactly the same way as we remembered. And what we got was a full HD remake of Crash Bandicoot, Crash Bandicoot Cortex Strikes Back, and Crash Bandicoot Warped, the three games that the fans grew up knowing and loving. Finally, Crash Bandicoot is getting the love and respect he deserves. This guy was a major player in the console wars back in the day. He deserves his own spot on the Mount Rushmore of gaming. Get out of my face here, Bubsy. The real sort of cat, sort of wolf, sort of Tasmanian devil is here. But for those of you who are actually wondering, a bandicoot is essentially a pig mouse that is native to Australia. There, I finally answered the question of what the hell a bandicoot was, all these years later. All right, so the big question on everyone's mind, why am I starting with Crash 2 first and not Crash 3 or number one? Well, longtime fans of The Completionist will know that Crash 2 was my first Crash Bandicoot experience and still is my favorite. It has the right balance of difficulty, a ton of humor, and great levels that will have you coming back for more. Technically speaking, New Game Plus Completionist only will cover Crash 2 and Crash 3 HD, as I did Crash 1 only a few years ago. But if you guys want me to do New Game Plus Crash 1, let me know in the comments down below. Better yet, click that icon that you see right now on screen. While Crash 2 HD may look completely different, the gameplay has largely stayed the same. It's still that same weird sort of 3D, 2D platforming game that we all remember. And I've gotta say, I love it when a classic gets this kind of love. 
I love the look of the old games, but I can definitely see new gamers coming to them and wondering why anyone could have thought that they looked this good in the first place. It's also a great opportunity for me to dive back into a game that I thought was great since the early PlayStation days. This was one of the first early games I experienced that I really felt the desire to fully complete. Finding each and every crystal and gem while destroying each and every box in the game was my life at nine years old. Let's take a step back. When I first reviewed Crash Bandicoot 2 for The Completionist, I think it's fair to say that I might have had a pair of nostalgia goggles on. But who knows? Crash Bandicoot 2 was a great goddamn game. Last time, I gave Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back on the PS1 my completionist rating of complete it. Because while you didn't really get much other than a cutscene for hitting that 100% mark, I believed that the journey to get there was enough of a blast to earn my highest ranking. Plus, it's not even that hard. It's a good one for all of you amateur completionist out there to dig your teeth into. However, that was almost seven years ago, and I am far less willing these days to put up with any new kinds of bullshit. This new HD take on Crash 2 may play like the PS1 game almost perfectly, but they've added time trials from Crash Bandicoot 3 into Crash 1 and 2, and let's be real, Crash Bandicoot 2 was not exactly designed to be a speedrunning type of game. You guys know me in time trials. This is going to mess with me a lot. If it's anything like Crash Bandicoot 3, getting the regular relics will be easy. Getting gold will be easy. Getting platinum, which is the developer times. Woo! Get my coffin ready. I'm ready to go down there. Crash Bandicoot has always had a unique platforming style that has yet to be seen in a resurgence. Did the Crash style of platformer go away because it wasn't good? I don't think so. Personally, I think that no one figured out how to make the ukulele or a hat in time of that genre. Mostly because there's really nothing quite like Crash. What could possibly go wrong? If you've never played a Crash Bandicoot game before, you're in for a very different type of platforming experience. It's a truly unique style that doesn't exist anymore. And with these updated graphics and control mechanics, you're going to either really love this game or actually complain like all the game journalists did and say it's the Dark Souls of platforming, which by the way, I know it won't die, but can we just please let this die as a community? Believe it or not, there was an era of games that existed where games were harder before the Souls series. And better yet, I honestly think that game journalists say it's the Dark Souls of blank because they know it'll make people angry and get clicks and views. And another goddamn thing. Oh, oh come on. on. I I just just I'm just saving I'm putting my foot down. Mama, Taking my that life back. To that is too it. much. While Mario and Sonic started by going left to right on a 2D plane, Crash Bandicoot was crossing different planes altogether while embracing 2D platforming in select moments. Instead of following the path of its platforming predecessors, Naughty Dog decided to try something new with the genre. Rather than stick to just two directions, Crash runs in a whole bunch of different directions. It points you in a direction and says, go, run, but only that way, there's cool stuff for you to find over there. With Crash 2, there are some side paths you can go down for some secrets, but they eventually will take you to the same end door. Essentially, for as many directions as Crash can run, at the end of the day, he still has one exact direction to go towards, the location of the crystal and the platform that'll take you back to the warp room hub. The goal of each and every level is to jump, slide, and spin your way to the end, nabbing one of 25 crystals needed to stop the world from being blown to bits by... The, the alignment of planets? The evil Dr. Cortex from the first game crash lands into a different area of the planet after being defeated by Crash Bandicoot following the events from the first game. Upon finding this cave, he found a new crystal source that he can use to nefariously take over the world. Dr. Cortex ends up manipulating Crash by telling him that Dr. Enbrio, a former co-worker from the first game, is out to destroy the world, and he needs Crash's help to stop him by getting the crystals. Guys, the name of the game is Cortex Strikes Back. If if you can't figure out the villain from the first game is still the villain in this game, especially after interacting with him in HD, then I don't know what to tell you. It might seem awfully linear, and that's okay because it is. But with the level designs being designed so simply, it allowed Naughty Dog to craft each and every level to perfection. For Crash 2 specifically, however, the game changed the focus of the linearity by introducing drastically different environments that Crash wouldn't normally appear in. The underground sewer levels allowed for Crash to be placed in more claustrophobic situations while trying to pressure him to move quickly. With Indiana Jones-like boulders or massive polar bears chasing you, 
Crash 2 wants you to move when the pressure is there. And with the addition of the little cute bear pal who is still the best character in the Crash franchise, Crash Bandicoot 2 solidifies itself with evolving a franchise, setting up the success that will ultimately pass over into Crash 3. In the PlayStation 1 version of the game, the fun little details are certainly there. There are a sh load of different enemy types, environmental stuff, and variations on the gameplay. It's really impressive what Naughty Dog was able to do with such a simple concept. With the HD collection, it just kicks everything up a notch. This is Crash for a new generation. This is what you thought Crash would have looked like when you played it when you were a kid. Remember all those aggravating Venus flytraps that used to snap you up? How about the icy peaks of the Alpine worlds? Sorry to destroy your memories, but those were piles of primitive polygons back in the day. You'll find yourself really laughing and enjoying a lot of the updated sprites because with the older games, you kind of had this idea in your head of what they looked like, but then when you see them in the game, you were either spot on or way far off the deep end. While I still enjoy the original older looking trilogy, newcomers to the franchise will find that the HD remakes do a fine job of representing the older games. Crash's sprite is hilarious and truthful to the original, while somehow removing the creepiness of the original character model. And in reminiscing about 2017, my favorite meme to come from 2017 was the Crash Bandicoot Whoa meme. So thank you to OniPlays for that. But one new thing that's been added into the game is the ability to play as Coco, Crash's sister. Once you reach the Ice World hub area, you can play as her. The gameplay ultimately is the same, but it's still a fun thing to change up if you'd like. At least Crash isn't as creepy when he does the dance this time around. Crash Bandicoot 2 is all about collectibles. It established its footing as a collectathon platformer even more so after the first game with Cortex Strikes Back. There's a bunch of bonus rooms that are safe but fun, death platforms that will take you to secret areas that are usually way more difficult than the beaten path, and there's even secret warp rooms that will let you reconnect to other levels. You'll find yourself sometimes getting to the end of a stage and realizing you're missing a crap ton of boxes because you didn't have a colored gem to take you to a certain area, or you need to access it from a different warp room. TLDR, completing Crash 2 is a pleasure because there's a ton of secrets and things to do that feel good when you conquer them. However, there's a bit of an issue. When the Insane Trilogy was released, fans of the original Crash Trilogy weren't happy, at least those of the hardcore variety. With the updated graphics came updated gameplay, sort of. The physics implemented into the game with the graphics seemed to make the game a little bit harder. Hitboxes were off, and Crash's hitbox himself was much bigger. Jumps and slides that were once easy in the original game are a bit more difficult to do. Really though, the upping of the difficulty has me slightly conflicted. Obviously, I adore the original version of Crash 2. I have played a ton of it and I feel like I know a majority of the secrets, platforming shortcuts, and patterns for defeating bosses. Beating the original game is less about a challenge as it is a given at this point. It's the gaming equivalent of comfort food, if you will. The problem is, the balance of it all has to feel fair. Crash 2 HD had my Patton and Gerard syndrome ready for me to experience. Many moments where I kept dying at the exact same spot endlessly. But once I got used to the more precise hopping, I managed to get through it. Despite only a few serious struggle moments, I had a blast playing the Insane Trilogy version of Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back. Now the trophies that were added into the game, surprisingly enough, were leaning more towards the fun side and leaning less on the frustration, which is exactly how I love my trophies to be. However, the f time trials in Crash Bandicoot 2 are a Goddamn nightmare, Jesus Christ. It's one thing to need to get a basic relic and a gold relic time, but to get the platinum developer times? This part of the game is the only part where I could validly say that it's got that Dark Souls reliability that everyone's been shitting about. Holy God, these time trials are freaking awful. If you didn't have a beard or some chest hair before, this game will put them there for you. Whether or not they're gray hairs or black hairs is up to you and your genetic code. But you'll probably make them white by the time you're done. And as a reminder, these time trials were not in the original game. Ah, this sh boils my blood. Completing the original Crash Bandicoot game was a breeze. And if you are playing the insane trilogy version and you are a seasoned veteran to platformers, well then you'll experience this as well. Once again, breaking every box, getting every crystal, colored gem, silver gems, and beating the secret warp room levels will grant you 100% ranking on your game save file and give you a secret ending that ensures that you defeated Cortex. As an aside, when you actually defeat Cortex, you will unlock the speed shoes, which allows 
allows Crash to run faster than normal. Very important to unlock those before you even try any of those time trials. Getting all the collectibles? No problem. Getting all the trophies? No problem. Getting all the platinum relics? You can go f yourself. Holy crap, is it difficult? This is not for the faint of heart. It took me four times as long to become the best at getting these times for levels than it did me beating the game. And let me just say, I love the PS4 controller. I really do. But holy crap, I got the worst blisters on my thumbs. I found myself continually readjusting my thumbs in the middle of speedrunning levels because I was losing my grip from the amount of pain and sweat coming from my hands. And the unfortunate reality is you don't get anything from getting all of the platinums. Just the ability to brag to your friends. Your percentage does go up a little bit on your game save file, and you will get some fireworks when you get all the relics normally, but sadly, you get nothing else than that. In my playthrough of Crash Bandicoot 2, the Insane Trilogy version, there were 276 deaths, but I did collect 99 lives, 42 hours of total playtime, 25 crystals, 27 gems, five colored gems, and 27 platinum relics acquired. My thumbs hurt so bad. And finally, zero times that the crash dance got old. Man, I just, I still think that dance is awesome. Honestly, between the two versions of the game, Crash Bandicoot 2 and the HD Insane Trilogy version, it might just boil down to personal preference. Speedrunners and OG Crash diehard fans probably won't be too stoked on this particular version of the game. And some newcomers to the series might be turned off by a game that can feel just a tad too difficult and unfair at times. But for those of you that just want more great Crash Bandicoot, the remake is a really great experience. I loved revisiting the worlds within it. Doing it all again and seeing the little dude grow into a full-blown next-gen guy is awesome. I hope that with its massive success that the devs over at Vicarious Visions decide to make another new Crash Bandicoot game with these tools. Or at the very least, please don't mess it up again. As a remake, Crash Bandicoot 2 Cortex Strikes Back is a wonderful return to form for one of Sony's first mascots. The game stays very truthful to its roots, while amping up with the graphical power of the current console generation. However, adding time trials to Crash Bandicoot 2, and 1 for that matter, is an interesting decision. One that I admire, but one that unfortunately for us completionists might sour the experience quite a bit. It's real hard, and ultimately, you get nothing for your troubles. The original version of Crash Bandicoot 2 received my completionist rating of complete it. However, with all of that in mind, guys, I give Crash Bandicoot 2, the insane trilogy edition of the game, my completionist rating of finish it. Finish it. That's all time we have for today, guys. So please, as always, let me know about today's episode somewhere on the internet. If you liked today's video, do me a favor, hit the like button, leave a comment down below for what new episodes of New Game Plus you want to see next. If you're new here, hit that subscribe button. You can uh, check out our video from last Friday. We do episodes every Tuesday and every Friday right here on this channel. I've been Gerard Kill the Completionist, and I'll see you guys next week, or actually this Friday, for another brand new episode of The Completionist. Bye.